Hi guys, welcome to the Fashion Preneur Talk with Yutana Styling Podcast. If you don't know me, my name is Sandra. I'm a fashion stylist, a podcaster, and a business consultant. And this podcast is about having genuine conversations about fashion entrepreneurship and getting your questions answered. So if you have any questions at all, please email me at info at gitanastyling.com. Gitana is G-I-T-A-N-A styling.com. I will leave a link below for you anyway. Okay. Now, I want to invite you to join us inside our free Facebook group, Fashion Entrepreneur Club Hangout. In there, I answer questions, I share resources, I host events. So if you're interested, I'll leave a link also for you. Last but not least, I have a free resource for you that is great if you're just starting your business and you don't know, you know, you know, the steps to follow and put together a plan or maybe you have been in business for a while but you know it's not really working well it's not really working as you expected then these guys are for you they're completely free i'm gonna leave a link below it's just three guys that you get uh, via email and i walk you through the process you can create that plan that really works for you and your business okay so without further ado let's just get started with the podcast Okay, welcome guys to this episode. I am so excited to introduce this guest today. Um, she's bringing such great information for you guys. So I'm really, really happy to have her here. Her name is Christine Gray. She is the visionary founder of She Profits Now, and she's the creator of the Financially Fabulous Coaching Program, okay? She has 25 years of experience, okay, of expertise in finance, and she has a deep passion, uh, deep passion for empowering entrepreneurs, okay? She specializes in transforming the financial landscapes of businesses in the fashion industry industry and with her program she not only educates but she also instills a robust money mindset which we all need right which empowers designers and creators to manage their finances with confidence which is a big thing okay and also with a strategy so she's going to help you with budgeting with investing with scaling okay and she's going to ensure that every dollar that you spend has a purpose so i'm super excited to have her here welcome welcome christine to the podcast Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here as well. Yay. I'm so happy to have you here. I want to start the conversation by telling people a little bit more about you and your background and why you started this wonderful business. Oh, yes. So of course, I'm my foundation of my experience is in accounting and tax and compliance and financial statement reporting. And I started my business fresh out of college. I was just an entrepreneur at heart. It was not even a consideration for me to be employed by you know, corporate America. But when I started my business, I quickly grew it into many different segments of it, different industries, right? But it was pretty quick that I recognized my passion and my interest in working with not only female entrepreneurs or, you know, of the same mindset, um, but also to empower entrepreneurs in truly understanding the money that flows through their business and what that money landscape looks like for them personally and their business goals and the vision and the dreams that they have set for themselves versus just being a transactional accountant. And from there, it just transitioned. I was working in the medi spa industry, in the salon industry, in the fashion industry. And it did, it just started like transitioning into it's, it took a life on of its own yeah. and it's, you know, 25 years later, I'm primarily in the fashion and independent retailer and wholesaler segment. But really, truly, when we look at when I look at my client base, we are 100% focused on empowering and allowing individuals to feel comfortable with data informed and strategic decision making while still being focused on their ultimate goals and not being scared of those decisions. And that's where that empowerment comes on. But that creative entrepreneur is our client. And we just love it because it's also fun to deep dive into all that creativity that's being generated and know that we can walk alongside those entrepreneurs in their success story while giving them the power to be yes. the decision maker, right? Like, yeah. So that's just where I came from. It just started evolving and happening and it was filling my soul. And I just continued to build upon it based on what I could see these entrepreneurs in our field where you and I reside, what they needed. Yeah. So that's been my drive all along. Awesome. I, I love it because it is so needed. I feel like sometimes mm -hmm. in this industry, 
um, as much as I go to events and classes and hire mentors and all of that, sometimes this part, the mindset part around money, it's not really talked about and the strategies and a lot of people in the creative industry struggle with this area. So I'm super happy that, that you're helping this segment for sure. And I wanted to ask you this personal curiosity because you said you started your business right out of college. How has that evolution been? Like you starting the business, when did you hit like your first like breakthrough and how did it evolve to what we have today? Oh, uh, yeah. So when I started my business, it was, you know, it, obviously you always have to start at the roots. And so, you know, you start out as a in my industry, you started as a bookkeeper and then you would become a tax accountant and then you become an advisor and a coach. And then you, you know, then I started transitioning and going, okay, who is my core client and who do I want to work with? And who can I really truly not only fill my own soul and purpose with my business, but really benefit and support and grow them and offer all the goodness that I had as my own professional vision. My transition in my business where it really started to take pace and created an, ident an identity that I was very proud of, which is She Profits Now and the coaching program, Financially Fabulous, was when I made the decision to really drill down and niche down and focus on what is my core area of ideal clients, right? Like that's ideal client avatar when you're, cause I am a creative, I, I'm very creative as well, but yet I'm analytical. Yeah. And so I just had to take a step back that it was, yeah, maybe 10 years ago, I just took a step back and it's just like creatively, who do I connect with the most? What is my style of how I coach and how I transform entrepreneurs knowledge around finances and how am I going to do this? Yeah. to my best ability. Mm -hmm. And it just continued to land in this industry. And that was the pivot for my business is really niching down, getting very clear on who I'm serving, yeah. getting very clear on what I wanted out of my professional future, and then how I could benefit others with my own desires, thus make a difference, right? Like we all want to make a difference with what we're doing. That's when it really started to click. And that's when it really started to progress and just become the beautiful thing that it is today, but that didn't come without struggles. That didn't come without mi several misses, right? Like working in segments that I just didn't have the passion for. And then having to release that segment from my business and let those customers fire those customers, if you want to call it that, but yeah. just say, okay, yep, that's not the best fit for me. So it was about being creative with what can I create out of my business and how can I transform a traditional accounting firm and advisory and coaching and consultative firm into something that's very powerful for seg one segmented industry and how can I become the best in that industry yeah it was niching down mm -hmm. okay. who do I connect with the most yeah, yeah. that's that's so key <laughs> it is <laughs> even in creative is design yeah it's, it's, a, style. It's, a, it's a natural process we all go through it right and and it's figuring out which I always tell people don't be afraid of the process we when we started out and I'm I, I did the same when I started out you want this perfect plan of what you're gonna do and that's gonna change so much and you have to 100%. be open to the change and you have to go through that and and be okay with okay you know these clients don't work for me this type of work doesn't work for me and like you're saying, niching down, niching down to that place where you feel good about what you're doing and that you're serving the right people that aligns with you. Yeah, it's a natural evolution to have to try different opportunities yeah. and recognize which opportunities aren't a best fit, how to say no to like opportunities in the future mm -hmm. and continue to just what is your identity and how do you want to be unique and how do you want to stand out above and beyond everybody in the crowd? And I mean, obviously there's creatives, that's so important to do is like, what makes me unique? Yeah. Totally. And what's my appeal? I agree. And when it comes to money man mindset, which I think these terms are terms that are being thrown all over the place nowadays. And people talk about them. And a lot of people discard them because like, ah, you know, like yeah. that topic, whatever. I want you from your point of view, since this is what you do, you know, how can having a positive money mindset can influence someone to have a successful fashion business? Yeah. So I'm not one to coach about how we, you know, how we were brought up with money and what our grandparents taught us and our parents taught us with money and how we were taught to handle money. I'm not one to look backwards when it comes to our money mindset. Mm -hmm. I'm more of one to take a look at it with everything that I coach. I always look at it to say, you are standing in a gap of opportunity. And yes, 
definitely with numbers and metrics and how your business is doing and the decisions you've made, you've got to look back, yeah. but, and then you plan forward. But when it comes to money mindset, I always just say, stand in the gap where you are today and don't worry about what you were taught in the future and some of those emotions that you have about money. Instead, focus on just a few key factors that will adjust your thinking going forward, like put the positivity forward instead of focusing on the negativity backwards. But it's about money being a resource. In everything that we do in life, money is a resource. And we just have to look at it with, it's we can, we can treat it with respect. It Money is kind to us. Money is, we earn it and we deserve it. And we, it's, a, it's the resource, right? And we do deserve it, but we also have to respect our money. And so that money mindset coaching, I'm looking at it to say, it is your resource. And if you were limited with water, for example, mm -hmm. as a resource to survive, you would treat it very respectfully. You would conserve it. You would make very good decisions around your usefulness of it. And you need to think of your, your money dollars as the same. So I also look at it to say, it's your resource to get you where you want to go. It's that vehicle. But not only that is take a common sense approach. So whatever your current experience is, when you look back and you say, well, here's how I've always managed money. This is who I am. I'm not good with math. I was never taught this, right? It's more about if you think forward and you go, I'm an adult, I'm responsible for my future and my outcome. I'm an entrepreneur, what is the common sense approach of using this resource? Mm -hmm. But not only that is then you add on top of the fact of it, it's a resource, you've got a common sense approach. Now put yourself into a position where you are always doing what I call an up-level analysis. Mm -hmm. And so that up-level analysis in your money mindset is that when you have cash flow coming into your business and you know that it's the resource that has to stretch into so many different areas, and you have to make a common sense decision on how that cash flow is going to be used. It doesn't have to be a struggle to make the decision or scary or binding, right? Like a, the word budget seems so binding and restrictive, right? It doesn't have to be. You can look at it and say, I'm going to be creative with my money and the cash flow that I have. And I'm going to use common sense, but I'm also going to make sure that that resource is up leveled. And that up level approach is, is every decision that you make about that cash flow in your business bank account. Is it up leveling you as an entrepreneur and a creative? Is it up leveling your opportunities and your ability to reach your vision and goal that you've set for yourself personally and professionally, as well as the goals you have for the business itself? And does it up level your ability to reach those goals and produce revenue, right? Because we have to invest into our revenue producing activities mm -hmm. when you start to ask is this spend going to up level my experience and what i can accomplish mm -hmm. all of a sudden it makes it empowering yeah. right like it's going to up level me this is okay to spend the money but it's yeah. also okay to say no common sense wise i shouldn't spend it on this because it's not going to up level me and now it just makes that binding decision a lot easier and yeah. that's where the word budget comes out right like no we're not budgeting we're yeah. quite simply assigning purpose to every dollar before it's spent. And yeah. we're going to make sure that it's an up-leveled experience. Yeah. 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 That's my money mindset, right? Like stop dwelling on the past and I, the story and the narrative you've told yourself. I agree. I agree. I agree with that. And it also, you know, which is part of my next question. It's also about confidence, which, you know, as we go through this process of being an entrepreneur and having our own business and making all these decisions, a lot of the people don't grow or don't expand um, and they don't build this stable foundation because they don't have that confidence to make those decisions, right? So it's yeah. having that mindset, like what you explain is beautiful, like what it's going to bring back, what it's doing for you. All of that is really important, that perspective, but also how can people start, you know, what steps can people start taking to build that confidence to make those kind of decisions? Yep. Yep. So it definitely does come down to confidence to say, I have control of this, but right? mm -hmm. I have control of my cash flow. It's not going to, having profit and cash flow strength in your business doesn't, I always say it doesn't happen haphazardly. Yeah. It has to be planned out. It has to be strategic. It's intentional. It's with purpose, like I said, but that is as easy as sitting down with a piece of paper and going, okay, 
If I were to look at my business, so your audience, if you look at your business into segments of where you're spending your money. So when it comes to creative entrepreneurs in the fashion industry, you're designing products, your wholesaling products and or retailing products, um, as an example, you would look down and say, one of my segments is my inventory. How much inventory do I need? And at what levels am I bringing that inventory in? And at what timing am I bringing that inventory in? But to the core is what's the investment and how does that investment fluctuate season over season, right? Because we're always dealing with fluctuations in our industry. So that's one segment. And then the next segment of your business is your operating expenses. What is it costing you to operate this business? But then the third segment is profitability and tax and owner's distribution. That's a very important segment. And so when it comes with confidence around cash flow, I'm always coaching is just break it down into manageable parts that you actually have a vision and sight lines on, but also set up guardrails. And this is going to come down to, it, it is, it's just segmenting your cash flow, which allows you to segment every decision that you make around your cash flow into just easier components to yeah. maneuver and manage versus just looking at the one big bucket of your bank account yeah. and trying to make decisions around inventory, operating expense and profit and cash flow and, and owner's pay and taxes. Yeah. That's very difficult. And that's where we stray away from it. That's where we get overwhelmed mm -hmm. and we just start, right? Like every dollar it, it, assigning purpose, every dollar just starts to flow. We don't know where it went. We lose our confidence. We're not empowered. There's no clarity. And instead take a step back and segment it. Totally. And this is where, you know, I hear the people who are listening to us, you know, even though you're explaining it in a very simple way and I get what you're talking about and I think right. everybody can do this, everybody can, you know, get organized and, and start thinking this way and doing it. This is where education comes in and this is where you come in. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. if this feels overwhelming to you, if this is something you need support, then isn't it worth it to have someone <laughs> like, like you next to you, you know, guiding you through this process you know you cannot build this whole thing uh on your own like that you that's why we have all these resources all around us to to make this happen and you know you are the perfect partner for this yeah yeah so where we step in and where we really pride ourselves you know she profits now is an accounting firm a tax firm and a compliance firm mm -hmm. from its roots but as this business has transitioned and I has I've been able to transition into my own professional development, it has greatly become a coaching firm, an advisory firm, a guidance and support firm relative to the creative entrepreneur's financial journey. And our vision and our mission is about entrepreneurial advancement and clarity around the dollars, but also system and process and framework, because when I said, just sit down with a piece of paper and start to map out mm -hmm. what we pride ourselves in is it's our financially fabulous coaching program. Mm -hmm. We have a digital and interactive workbook that is online that will allow you to understand and see your sales metrics, your inventory metrics, your, your financial metrics. And I know now we're getting into accounting terms and that's where we start to get emotional pushback, mm -hmm. but what it is, is you you uh, put yourself into a space where you you just know within our program of how much inventory do you need and when and in what SKUs should you be ordering at and what how fast are you going to be able to turn it? Yeah. But then we also coach and teach you on how much, where's your revenue potential today with your new customers and your returning customers and how often are they buying from you? Is it every season that you see them or can we get them to come back in? And what's our average order value? And just by tweaking some of those numbers, all of a sudden we have higher revenue potential, right? It's, yeah. it's adding focus to those areas. Yeah. Um, but no matter what, it all comes down to where are you willing to invest your time, your energy and use that resource, Yeah. but eliminate it, allowing yourself to be a little bit vulnerable, yeah. right? Yeah. And yeah. that financially fabulous coaching program that we have, it's literally a week over week and we are teaching independence, financial independence, but it's with our guided profit scale system. So the tool and the framework is there. Yeah. And it's, here's, here's the crazy thing is the program itself is known to pay for itself. Mm -hmm. But in so many times, if your audience is sitting in a scope where they are gone, I'm in debt and it's because of inventory and it's, I have to pay, you know, obviously you have to 
do your transfers out to wherever they're going yeah. for your orders. And you've got a lot of inventory sitting there, either in your own warehouse or, you know, through third party 3PL. Yeah. It's, it's very scary, but if you know exactly where those inventory needs are and how quick mm -hmm. you're going to be able to turn them all of a sudden writing that check and using that resource mm -hmm. isn't as scary because it's very intentional. It's totally. planned out and you can plug and play the scenarios. And yeah. that's what we coach is plugging and playing the scenarios so that you know that when you make that decision to order that set of quantity, mm -hmm. it is mapped out that that is the right decision and that you couldn't have made a better decision, yeah. right? And so that's where, and that's money mindset as well, where you yeah. look at it and you say, cash flow is a resource. Yeah. Or are we going to best manage our resource? And it's sometimes you just need data to do it, but you mm -hmm. also need strategy and design. Yeah. yeah. And you, yeah. you, you use the term purposeful spending, which I love that <laughs> yeah. because I think whether it's an expense, like, you know, having uh, been part of this coaching program that helps you make all these decisions and change your mindset and be empowered by everything that you're doing in the business. But also, you know, I talk to a lot of uh, different entrepreneurs and, you know, they keep looking at the expenses as, you know, business expenses like oh I have to pay this on shipping I have to pay this on this uh, app or software I have to pay this and that and I'm like I try them all the time to make them think you know yeah but what what is that doing for you you know yeah. it's not the the monthly expense that you have is that how much time is saving you how much productivity how much mm -hmm. and I love this term that you're using of purposeful spending so tell me a little bit more about that about assigning purpose to every dollar you know that you're using in the business and, and how can you know designers and other uh, fashion entrepreneurs can apply this to their business when it comes to their budgeting yeah so this is an actionable tip like right here this conversation is very actionable for your audience today mm -hmm. So when it comes to purposeful spending, it's going to come down to that segmenting that we just talked about. And so yeah. I'm going to give you some percentages that makes it very easy. So when you are looking at your business in segments, the decision-making is a lot easier, like we talked about. Mm -hmm. And in this industry, when you're doing creatives who are wholesale, you know, designing and then wholesaling, you know, ordering the product, manufacturing it themselves, and then wholesaling it and or retailing it, it comes down to a 40-20-40 rule that we coach. And these are the clients, like you guys are our ideal clients because of, like, we know how your, we know how the money flows through your business and at what what, how much money should go into each of those segments. So that's that 40, 20, 40 rule. Yeah. So if you sit down and you say, if I have $10,000 in my bank account, mm -hmm. and if I were to start segmenting my cash flow and making decisions within those areas, mm -hmm. I would put 40% of that $4,000 into my inventory bank account. Okay. Then I would put 20% into, cause it's the 40, 20, 40. I would put 20% into my profit tax and owner's pay. That's how we protect you, your profitability, paying yourself for your creative hard work and yeah. making sure that those taxes can be paid at the end of the year. Yeah. That leaves 40% for operating expenses. Mm -hmm. And so now when you're assigning purpose to every dollar, yeah. you're looking at your inventory and you're saying, if I have 40, per you might have to do an initial investment into inventory. Yes. That's yeah. every business has yeah. to have its initial investment. But when you're maintaining that investment, products sold, money yeah. goes back into the inventory bank account and then is respent on inventory. Mm -hmm. If you live in that 40% rule, mm -hmm. it gives you the leeway to say, okay, my margins as a wholesaler are maybe 33%. That gives me a 7% growth factor of my cost of inventory. I can build some reserve on my inventory, which then allows me to easily buy eight weeks to 12 weeks ahead before I even can sell the inventory because I need the production time and delivery time. You, you now look at the decision that I just talked through. Mm -hmm. I've got 40% of my cash flow always in inventory. It's cycling through constantly and I'm making decisions. What can I order? What can I afford? Do I have to fund it for a while because I'm growing? Am I building a reserve? Are my margins good enough to live within that 40%? If they're not, you're not selling high enough, right? Mm -hmm. Like where is your markup, your pricing for profitability? Like I'm talking through so much that's happening in that first inventory 40%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All of a sudden you've got, okay, I can focus on those decisions. It's only about my manufacturing and my product and how I'm selling it. 
Yeah. Then you shift and you go, okay, 20% goes into my profit, my tax, my owner's pay. I'm now going to be able to pay myself. Maybe some of that profit is used to pay down debt, right? Mm -hmm. Like, or you got to set it aside for your estimated tax payments. You've got your decisions right there just in that profit dollar. Yeah. How much goes to what responsibility mm -hmm. in that segment? Yeah. But then you shift over to the remaining 40, which is operating yeah. expenses. It forces you to squeeze yeah. what your operating expenses are. Mm -hmm. And investment always comes first. That's that up-level experience. Yeah. And then the I want expenses mm -hmm. come last. And yeah. so you just look at your 40%. And you mark, what have you committed to? Where's your obligations? What are you investing in? What's your priorities? And if you do not have enough money, you've got to start adjusting that spending yeah. or you're robbing money from your 20% profit category. Yeah. And when you have it, so I always just look at, you've got lines, right? You're always mm -hmm. standing in the middle gap and that's that 20%. Mm -hmm. It's the gap of opportunity. Yeah. And if you put that mindset to say, I'm going to always protect the profit opportunity, uh -huh. You will figure out how to price for profit on the inventory mm -hmm. on the first mm -hmm. segment and you will figure out how to live within your means. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it just starts to come naturally and you have, the, you have, you have complete control over it versus it just being just money going, money coming in and money going out. And it seems so chaotic. Yeah. Instead it's intentional. Yeah. yeah. No, the structure, having that structure gives you so much, uh, peace of mind and it helps you adjust like you're saying okay so I am not making enough here I have to adjust this and then you can it starts being a game it and it yeah. has it has purpose and it has it gives you clarity so I think that it's wonderful <laughs> yeah yeah Love it, it breaks it down into manageable pieces that yeah. isn't as daunting yeah but also allows us to um, you know what I always say is like another part of it is it actually we're creatives. It actually can be fun and creative. Yeah, exactly. Once you gain like control game. of mm -hmm. it and mm -hmm. you start to say, what are the levers I can pull yeah, in my inventory? Yeah. What are the levers I can pull in my operating expense? Totally. I can promise it, we're entrepreneurs. We're type A. Like yeah. that's just the way it is, right? Mm -hmm. We're creative and we're type A, and mm -hmm. and we're going to teach you to be analytical because mm -hmm. analytical is a learned skill. Mm -hmm. It's not something that you were born with or not born with, right? Mm -hmm. And so we teach you the analytical powerhouse mm -hmm. behind that very creative, intelligent brain. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it, I promise you, you will become almost addicted to it, which then it goes back to that money mindset is I always, I teach to a Monday date with my money. Yeah. That's what I teach to. When you start to put a framework and a structure in like this 40, 20, 40 segment yeah. rule where we're assigning purpose to every dollar, yeah. your Mondays will be pretty easy to time block. Time yeah. block. Yeah. Because now you're looking at it to say, this is creative. This is fun. Like I'm doing all these creative things with my ordering and my discussions with my manufacturer and my pricing strategy and my conversations with my wholesalers that are buying my retailers that are buying from me wholesale, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's that creative um, empowerment. I don't know how yeah. else to say. Yeah. And I love that you talk about that staying in the middle, that 20%, that paying yourself first, because that gives you so much like it's a foundation, you know, that you need yes. that a lot of people struggle with a lot of people that I work, especially when they're just starting out. Um, and I know it takes some time to get to that place, of course, but yes. um, it's important. It's important that you take care of yourself and that you take care of the needs and you take care of the taxes and those kind of things that really, you know, drive the anxiety <laughs> in this yeah. thing. So if you have that down and then you use the other thing to play around with everything else it just gives you such big bigger peace of mind you know yeah yeah the the 20 percent gives you sleepful nights yeah. it gives you motivation it gives yeah. you self-worth mm -hmm. it, it makes you understand why you're doing you know why you continue to follow your dream and never yeah. second guess why you're following that dream yeah. that 20 percent is you know it's your power mm -hmm. yeah it's your power I agree. I agree. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And for the people who are feeling fear about this, you know, cause I, you know, all this stuff wakes up a lot of fears inside, whether from the past, from things that we've learned at home. And I know you, you don't say going to the past, but what, how now <laughs> in this moment, what are the strategies that we can apply to, you know, deal with that fear and, and, you know, do what we have to do, make these decisions. You know, I mean, I, th I, dealing with the fear comes down to the decision that you you are capable of mm -hmm. stepping into control of all things money in your business 
Yeah. And understanding those, like I said, intentional and strategic decisions. Mm -hmm. And it really comes down to dealing with the fear comes down to, would you rather live with the fear or would you rather, rather create the empowerment? And mm -hmm. would you rather create the freedom mm -hmm. and create the, I mean, it's in, and it's also just to say the first step into it might be the hardest and the yeah. vulnerability is the scariest, Yeah, but it's as easy as the first step being cash flowing that 40, 20, 40, yeah. just going, okay, I'm going to live by the 40, 20, 40 rule, but then I'm going to figure out how to make it work. And that comes down to like what we coach in the financially fabulous coaching program. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a decision, right? Yeah. Do you want to live in fear or, do, or empowerment? Yeah, Which one? like I said, you can always choose courage, yeah. right? And move yeah. move forward with it. And I I feel like um, to kind of close this conversation, because I know we talked about a lot of different things. Yes. Um, <laughs> so many topics. And guys, if you have any questions, please leave them below. You know, we'll be happy to to help you with them, okay? And of course, I'm going to share all uh, of all of her links and everything, her website, her programs, everything, so you guys can connect with her, okay? Um, but, you know, to kind of close that conversation and, and dealing with that fear, I feel investing, investing for growth in yourself mm -hmm. and in the business is a big part of this. I want you to talk a little bit, a little bit more about that. You know, what specific, you know, financial practices should we prioritize, you know, to ensure that, you know, the spending we're spending wisely and we're fueling sustainably development in the business and all of these things. What do you recommend when it comes to that? For that so program. I really, I mean, the, the best thing you can do with yourself. Okay. So when your finances are in order mm -hmm. and you are not struggling financially, everything else is easier. Yeah. Everything else is easier. So why wouldn't we make that one of our first investment areas of our business? Yes. Inventory, yeah. obviously, because that's, what's keeping the cash yeah, flow moving. Yeah. But when it comes to growing yourself as an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. you, you've got to invest in it. You, you can't Google your way through it. I'm sorry. You just can't because especially you need industry specific knowledge. Yeah. And so I really look at it to say investing into, which is why we built our financially fabulous coaching program, right? Is into a framework mm -hmm. that allows you to build out a forever learning opportunity one that you are the hero and you maybe as have the guide yeah not one that I, I'm not a fan of consultative strategy that lasts forever mm -hmm. where I'm telling somebody what to do and not giving them the why yeah. or the um forever outcome that they can do it themselves yeah. it comes down to investing into yourself learning how to manage your business financially businesses that are successful do they have a CFO they have a financial director. They understand the use of every dollar and the why behind every dollar. Yeah. And there's for some reason, as creatives or you know, the retail and wholesale industry is rather easy to get into. And it is um, more vulnerable from a profitability standpoint because of the investment risks of inventory. Yeah. That makes it more important to identify with the fact that what makes us so different as small independent entrepreneurs that we that we're allowing ourselves to not be the financial director of our company, right? Yeah. And so that investment will pay for itself in the long run. And it will be one that continues to pay for itself because you will start to use strategic decision-making around every dollar in your household, in yeah. your business, mm -hmm. in the next business. When you know an opportunity presents itself, you're going to learn how to analyze that opportunity. Is it a good fit or not? Yeah. And that's really what we try to culture in our coaching program. Yeah. Oh, Does that answer your question? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I think this is awesome. And I, you know, for those of you guys who are listening and are like, oh, where do I start? Where do I start? Um, where do they start, Christine? <laughs> honestly, I'm obviously going to say that you start with our coaching program, yeah. right? Yeah. I honestly am. Um, yeah, in our coaching cool. program, it you know, we have the guided profit scale system, which is the framework, but we also come in and we, we coach it on three different stages where if you think about your financial journey, you're always in a three-stage um, cycle that you're just going back and forth and you, you have to first focus financially. Yeah. And you have to build out a plan. You have to understand how your business, where it's coming from and where it's going. Yeah. And once you build out that plan and you understand your sales and your inventory and your financial metrics, yeah. you now have the guide of how you're making decisions and why and where, yeah. but then, so that's that focus phase, but then you start to optimize. Like, how do I squeeze a little bit more out of it? How do I optimize it? 
How do I, you know, if, if you literally touch three of your metrics at any given point, you have like a seven time multitude effect. It's crazy. The, the compounding effect of small incremental changes that better your business and your financial position. So that's your optimize. And we teach you. So we teach you the focus. We build out the plan and mm -hmm. the framework, and then we teach you how to optimize it. But then we help you elevate. Yeah. But what happens then is the next opportunity comes along, the unexpected change, right? Whatever it might be, you're always coming back into refocus. So think of your financial journey as you've got to focus, optimize, elevate, and you've got to cycle back and forth through those phases. And you can't be afraid of the back and forth. It's not like it's 10 steps forward, two steps back. Yeah. It's just revisiting where you're at today. Because okay. business always is evolving. It's never stagnant, oh. which you cannot be either. And that's why we put it into the cycle of going back and forth. Yeah. And we make sure that that journey is infinite because it is yeah. in business. It it's is. Infinite. It uh -huh. is. And guys, if you feel overwhelmed or anything, just start small, start learning, start investing uh, yeah. in, in yourself, in the business and just start working, you know, with yeah. uh, with Christine or with someone that you really feel connected to and start doing this because like she said, it is an ever going evolution in, so, in everything, not only in your finances, but in your mindset, in the different yeah. things in the business. So you just have to start small and you start getting more confident and more confident and more confident and little by little you get to where you want to go for sure. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, Christine, this has been so wonderful. Is there anything else you want to share before we say goodbye to the audience? You know, I would love your audience. If you, if you're feeling empowered with what you're hearing here, and if you are feeling a little bit refreshed that there's some resources out for you, out here for you that understands your industry, right? Like I know your business inside and out and I know you, right? As, as I know your needs, I know your pains, your struggles and how you take in this type of learning yeah. drop into, if you're okay with me saying this, but we have an app. So just go to your Apple or your Google play at your store, go find she profits. Now get into our app. Mm -hmm. And obviously that's where our coaching program resides, but we've got a lot of tools in there for you. We've got one that would be really good for you. It's our seven steps to financial fabulousness. Mm -hmm. And it's going to teach you a lot more above and beyond what we talked about here. Yeah. That, Yes, it is. It gives you, it, it gives you in many ways a view into what the coaching program is, but there's a ton of yeah. just information there to get yourself in, in that mindset and in that mode. And even some action steps that you can start to take today, independent while you figure out your time and your investment and your willingness. Yeah. Um, but I also drop in there on a weekly basis and do, you need to hear this. And it's just these little snippets to go, you need to hear this. And all of a sudden it will trigger those thoughts that will help you with your money mindset and strategies and tactics. So jump in there and we can serve you there and I'm going to, we'll get you a link so you can see what's coming from your audience and you can support them in that regard. But that's, yeah, that's where I would be able to serve your audience on a deeper level. That's awesome. To make that's sure such that an they... awesome resource. Thank you so much for sharing that. Absolutely. Thank you for allowing me to. No, no, no. My pleasure. It has been a pleasure being here. I can't talk to you. I have so many questions. I know. <laughs> I talk to you for a long time, but I think we have kind of covered the most important stuff. And I'm super, again, super happy to have, have you here. Guys, if you have any questions, like I said, leave them below. Definitely uh, download the app. I I know I am going to for yes. sure. Um, and start getting, you know, involved with this content and 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 connect okay because this is a crucial part of the business for sure mm -hmm. so i want to thank all of you guys for listening today if you like this episode please like share subscribe and connect with christine christine again thank you so much and i just want to wish everyone a wonderful rest of your week and thank you again christine thank you i'll see you guys in the next episode bye guys bye